And good afternoon. Hope you're well. Now, yesterday we heard the news that two of the most senior members of the royal family are receiving hospital treatment. The Princess of Wales has already undergone serious surgery and the King himself will be admitted to hospital in a week for a prostate issue. Now, no one can help getting ill or needing medical attention, even if you are the head of state and the heir to the throne. But this situation is unprecedented and it does throw open the debate about how the royal family functions. I know Buckingham Palace has talked about a slimmed-down monarchy for ages, but right now there's hardly anyone there. And for good reasons or bad, this does feel like a moment. Since the death of Her Majesty the Queen, our perception of the royal family has changed. Of course, nobody can replicate decades-long impact of the late monarch, a woman who was in all of our lives forever, it seems. And nobody expected Charles to hit the ground running with anything like the same style or influence of his late mother. But the moment we saw our new head of state getting crowned, something didn't feel quite right. Look, he's popular, he's hard-working, he's diligent. Similarly, Queen Camilla, a grafter, an accessible figure, and someone who brings some light relief to the firm. But as the King's coronation came to that regal finale, something felt off. A tipping point, maybe. Life has not been straightforward for the Windsors in recent years. We know this. They've had their fair share of jip and hassle. Prince Andrew, of course, crashed out over those disturbing allegations made against him. But at least he made up for it by giving someone he'd never met $10 million. What a nice man. These events, of course, collided with an even bigger royal headache as Harry and Meghan left the room and carved out a new existence over there in California. They wanted a quiet life and some privacy. So they signed up for a global talk show, a book, a podcast and a Netflix series. They weren't interested in royalty. They wanted royalties. And, of course, they managed to play that final tribute to the Queen by naming one of their kids after her. This apparently went down about as well as that Oprah interview did. Look, to lose one member of the royal family is unfortunate. To lose two, a potential disaster. But it has provided a foundation for a wider discussion. Today we see a rather brittle and bare royal family. They are thin on the ground. And now with this latest news, there's no obvious person in charge. But will anyone really notice? Royal engagements are being cancelled by the minute and the palace are busy sending out as many press releases as they can to quell any panic. Naturally, we wish Princess Kate and the King speedy recoveries. That goes without saying. But this does feel like a moment. Maybe a reckoning. Possibly nobody would invent a royal family tomorrow. We know this. The question is, do we need it today? That's the question we're throwing open to you. 0344 499 1000. Does Britain still need a monarchy?